back. Not live, but I'm back. Um, you've seen the videos uh, before this one. There'll be plenty to come. This will be my third vid. Um, the first two you'll see, uh, which was filmed a long time ago, sometime in July, I think. Um, let's just say I'm coming back and I'm not happy with a couple of people on here. I'm not happy with friends that call themselves friends. I'm going to be posting a lot of vids that um, you will be shocked. There's been daily documentaries of my struggles um, and you'll see them on YouTube. And they'll be posted at completely random times, random dates. So you may get an August the 1st one before July the 20th or you might get one July the 25th, the next vid, and then June, or so on and so forth. You might want to watch all the vids if you want to find out the full story of what's going on. Now, as you see in the first vid, I'm not here to make friends. I'm not here to sugarcoat anything. I'm going to tell it like it is. I won't be walked on anymore. I won't be treated like shit or be used. So that's fair warning in advance. The second thing is what happened to me was absolutely disgusting. And if you ever want to know the full story, you can you can come and meet me because I'm not going to fucking divulge all my life completely on Facebook and YouTube. You get some info in each vid. Maybe if you watch all the 20, 30 odd vids on YouTube when they get posted, you will kind of work out what's going on. Um, what's happened to me is absolutely, just absolutely disgusting. As a busy mouth. Okay, lots of commercial there. So, to sum it up, pretty much, it's I've been on home detention for the last few months. I have no access to internet. I have no way of getting out. My hopefully final court date is September the 6th, which you'll see this bit after then. And we are hoping everything goes back to normal. There shouldn't be any reason for an adjournment. There isn't any reason for any of these restrictions to be kept on. So I'll be back to having hopefully a normal life. Um, if you think that I'm just going to forget what happened, I ain't forgetting it. If you think that I don't deserve a relationship, go fuck yourself. See, I was never a problem in a relationship. I just find the wrong sort of people and I seem to uh, attract the people that are the worst kind. Um, and I have done so for the last two years. You know, as you'll hear on most of my vids posted after this one, you know, I've only loved and found two decent people in my whole life. My ex of six years and my first love. No one else has come close to how good they were, how much love and respect and appreciation I have for them. And they're the only ones that have ever been in my heart in a relationship. You see, the, the people I've dated over the last two years, it was for my benefit not to fall in love, not to, you know, expect anything more than what those sort of people are. These druggies, these low lives, they just want to leech off me. That's cool. They can do that because they're not happy with their lives and they seek out to destroy mine. They know that I live a comfortable life and a good life and they're just jealous because of that. See, I can provide anything as a husband, a fiancé, a father. I, I can fit that role. There's nothing wrong in my head, despite what everyone says. Even my psychologist was saying to me, you know, you play like the victim, Andre, but you're very smart. You're very, you know how to manipulate people to your advantage. You know how to get what you want in life. You're very powerful. Your mind is very clear what you want in life. You're very open about things that, you know, no other people know. And my psychologist said, there's nothing wrong with me physically. It's just the people that I introduce into my life, the problems. They're the ones that, you know, trigger these anger fits and trigger the bad side of me. There's nothing wrong with me. Psychologist said, you know, there's nothing wrong with me mentally. 
I've just got to associate myself with the right sort of people. And, you know, I do not want to surround myself with people that do drugs or buy and sell drugs or do anything illegal like I was doing. I was, you know, the pattern of girls that I was dating were all them. You see, I would say maybe one out of all the girls that I've dated over the last two years after my ex, one, only one has been decent. And she was a single mother that was, you know, no drugs, no smoking, kind-hearted, welcomed me in, accepted me into her house. That was the girl I was supposed to be with. But unfortunately, you know, I didn't end up with that one. But I do think about her. I mean, I like her. I like her mum. I like her, her little one. I think they're a wonderful family and I'd, I'd love to be a part of that. But maybe I'm just, you know, I don't know. But yes, I've not been in love for a very long time. Deep love. I've not felt it for a very long time. People may say, but you weren't you just in a relationship? I wouldn't even... Sorry. Hang on. I wouldn't call that a relationship. I was just uh, two people at the end of the day using each other, not in love, for their amusement. That's how I call that. I wasn't a relationship. You know, I wasn't, you know, someone did not love me. They didn't appreciate me. They didn't care about me. They just liked the fact that I lived a good life and they used me to to a point where, you know, they, they basically, once they're finished with me, spit me out, next person. That's that's how, unfortunately, this, this life goes. And, you know, I'm a better person now. You know, when I was in um, jail for a month, I realized that I didn't need people in my life. I didn't need distractions. I didn't need people putting me down. I didn't need people using me and abusing me. So if I told you a story, you guys wouldn't even believe what I've been through this year. This has been the worst year of my life. And I cannot stress how if you are not ready for a relationship out there, don't get into one. If you want to get into a relationship just to use someone for your advantage, you're a very bad human being. There's just too many women out there that only go into relationships because, you know, they've got nowhere else to go. They're homeless or they're poor and they want to leech off a guy. And you know what I find funny that, that, about some of these women? Once they've, you know, got the expensive jewelry from the guy and expensive stuff, they end up selling it for drugs and alcohol and they don't really get anything in return. Pretty sad life. The people that have dated me and no, and no better off since being after me in these last two years. I've seen all the girls the, where they are now. I'll give you three examples. Let's see. One of the single mothers I dated was an absolute bad druggie. And she still lives a miserable life alone. Struggling. Leeching off people. Asking people for money. And you look at her and go, you know where that money's going. To her alcohol every night. Her marijuana every night. Then there's another one that, um, it's funny, there's a lot of single mums that I've dated that are druggies that their lives have been absolutely pathetic. One's pregnant. Thank fuck, it's not my kid. <laughs> Man, being with that woman, fuck, it's disgusting. And all of them are bums. They're no hobbies, no job, no money, no license. They live in pig styles and they're pathetic. And... At the end of the day, I can smile. You know, when I was in jail, I knew that eventually I'd get out. And it's funny how charges went from being serious to not so serious now. Why is that? Because evidence says I don't do anything wrong. You know, all the severe stuff that apparently I did, I didn't end up doing. So that's why those things got dropped. You know why things get dropped in court? Not because I have a fancy lawyer, because I've not done the wrong as what people think I might have done. Because there's there's rumours out there. There's a lot of rumours of what I may or may not have done. And I can tell you now that 
they're all rumors. They're all lies manipulated to make me look like a bad person. I've lost friends. I lost friend of the day I went in. Do I care? Fuck no. Because the two friends that I lost are two pathetic women that don't have a life themselves. You see, one of them thinks she's all that and she can get any guy she wants. But the matter is, looks fade, honey. You know, you're not as great as what you think you are. And knowing that... And that's all I'm going to say at that person. Then there's another person that's a, it's a woman that thinks she's such a wonderful person. She's such a good mother to her kids. She has a great partner. Well, if she had a great partner, well, then why is she video calling me at nights? Every single night. Why is this person uh, sending photos to me? Some in lingerie, some in the shower. You think her partner would be cool about that? considering that this person doesn't even live with their partner and she calls out a relationship. Her partner has nothing. He does not work. He does not drive. And they barely see each other. They're barely intimate with each other. That's a relationship. I don't call that a relationship. You might as well not even really be. And the fact that the time that she was single, she never cared about her. She rubbished him and was chatting up other guys on social media. And I find it interesting that I was a problem in her relationship. No, I was never a problem in her relationship. Her partner knew that probably something I didn't know, that maybe she fancied me more than what she made out because a lot of my friends say, that girl fancies you. It's clearly obvious. What's clearly obvious is the friends that um, every time I got, when I dated a girl or was getting along with a girl quite well, this other girl would interfere and cost me those friendships. So obviously she's saying something to these other girls to make me look bad. This person has bipolar and it clearly shows. She's more vicious than half the girls I've dated. She's disgusting. Then she has a sook every now and again that she complains that she's fat or she's ugly. It's just for attention. You know, she doesn't care about her partner as much as she says she does. Because if you care about your partner as much as you say, well, why are you videoing me and calling me every night when I have a partner right next to me or I'm dating someone and you're calling us while we're in bed? Even one girl went, this is a fucking joke. That girl is a nuisance. She knows that you're on a date. She knows you're in a relationship and she still videos you and calls you. What kind of girl does that? You can be the judge of that. That's not a girl that, you know, the girl knows you're in a relationship. The girl knows that the person I'm dating doesn't like her and she still videos me every night. I'm like in the car, ring, ring. When my partner's there going, are you serious, Andre? I'm like, yep. But I'm the one that's in the wrong. I'm the bad guy. Figure that one out. I'm not the one calling this person that's also in a relationship. I'm not videoing this person. This person's calling me every day and every night, videoing me, knowing that I'm in a relationship. And when I was single, when I was dating people, video, video, video. My partner that I had at the time was saying, why is she calling her boyfriend up? Good point. You'd think if you don't live together and... You know, you're alone, you'd be calling your partner, not your friend. But I'm a bad guy. I'm supposed to be the bad guy in all this. Figure that one out. Just because her man cannot provide for her, he does not drive, he does not have an income. She has to look at this part of town, for me, that has everything that gives a woman. She's jealous because she, she doesn't have a guy like me. And there's one time where I heard them have an argument and... When I heard the argument, it was clear to this day, and I still say this to this day, he doesn't trust her, he doesn't love her, and he knows something that her friends don't know, and I don't know. I think that she's a little trap. Because I don't think I'm the only one that she's videoing every night. Just saying, because I found it interesting when, um, look, she was doing a live stream one night on another social app, and the fact that, you know, there was this other guy 
he was doing his show, like he was, you know, talking. She was trying to kiss his ass, tell him how handsome he looks. How, and she's supposed to love her other partner. They've separated just temporarily. But she's flirting with this other guy, and this guy is just ignoring it. He's basically like just gone, <laughs> this girl is kissing my ass, and all these other girls. He's getting the attention. He was an ugly guy, but she seems to find these uh, guys that are just um, phew, disgusting, really. It's funny because at my age, you know, let me just take this off. You know, oh, oh, let me show you something. Let me show you something. See this? Not a hair on my chest. Not a hair. And, you know, and you look at how tall I am. Like, look at that. Not fat. Skinny. I look, I look bloody good for my age. I don't look my age. I got hair, you know, clean shaven. I'm not fat. I'm not ugly. You see, I don't have problems picking up. I just have problems picking the right one. I've had that problem for the last two years. I just find trash, but it's okay because at the end of it, you know, they get that, what they want from me. I get what I want from them. They piss off and I, I stay happy. I stay in my kingdom. I stay up on the pinnacle of the mountain as I, you will see on all the vids that come after this one. Not knowing if this is the second or third vid. Keep that in mind because I'm not sure. I know one particular vid I'm going to post. But there's one before that and then there's this one. But there's other vids being made before this vid. There's been a music vid where I sang for two hours. Wasn't too bad. Um, some of the songs were from the heart, and it may act like in that vid I'm making it out to somebody. That vid's just dedicated to someone, but it's not. It's actually dedicated to a lot of the people I've dated, a lot of the exes, um, the ex of six years, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know when I will go live. Keep that in mind. You can message me. You can ring me. I'm not sure when I'll go live because I know what's coming. I will be sometime in September, be going for a trip. I'll be taking a one week holiday. I'll be getting on a plane and getting the fuck out of here. So, and then, you know, when I get back, I'll have a new car. I'll have a good life. I will have a different look. So what you see now is not what you'll see come November. Because I'm changing my look. It evolves weights. It evolves eating correctly. Yes, you heard me. Eating correctly. This vid will be on Facebook and YouTube because there's some people on my, they're not on my Facebook that watch my YouTube and be carefully watching these vids. But at the end of the day, I will bounce back. I will be better. Financially, I'm fine. Uh, like I said, I get, you know, once I get my new car, then I'll be undetected. Then that way no one can stalk me at night from my, just, you know, I'm worried about like, this is why I said to my parents, I don't want to be driving in the car that I'm driving now, just in case certain people stalk me and decide to follow me and smash my car, smash me. So this way, if I get a new car, new look, new life, I can't be followed. So I can go out shopping knowing my car will be safe. I can go out walking around, no one will recognize me, and it'll be great. While other people will be struggling, you know, for food and struggling to pay their bills and possibly living homeless while I'm living the good life. You see, at the end of the day, when you date someone, it's not about what they have or what they don't have. You should be with someone because you want to be with that person, which none of these people that I've dated over the two years wanted to be with me for me. They used me for their cigarettes, alcohol, place to stay, jewelry, expensive dinners. They used me for that. All they did in return, what? Bit of sexy time. Some of them weren't even sexy time. I, did, I, I got made out, but that's about it. As I've said before, in the vids you'll see coming up, you'll hear my battle cry. 
you'll hear the pain and suffering I've suffered. You know, at the end of the day, karma will get people back. And I know who my friends are. And if you think for one second that you know that I'm coming after you, some of my friends that are so cool friends, yeah, I am. Where were you in this time where I needed someone the most? You've seen my post on Facebook. You've seen the, the two lovely ladies that are posted on there. They were at least there for me. Shit, one of them, um, the most recent one on there, she was the one that was there the most for me. She kissed me. She held my hand. She cuddled me. Good kisser, by the way. But she was there when I needed someone. The day I got out of jail, she was there for me. Where were you, piece of shit? You know, I, I do know that in this time, you know, people have messaged me on Facebook, on my mailbox. I can't see it, obviously, because I don't have internet, but I know. Because so I got a friend to do it for me. I have know that people are worried about me thank you to those i will remember that i know who they are but those that have said oh i'm your friend i care about you you know the, the funny thing is the one that said are you still alive i felt like, you know i said to my friend I, I felt like saying to her send that girl a message saying yes he's alive where have you been like this was a girl that i've known for a couple of years very pretty girl doesn't do drugs, doesn't smoke. The one girl that I would love to take on a date, but I'm obviously not good enough for her. You know, she she's known what a nice guy I am. I am attractive, I'm not ugly. Even as a friend, she said once she loved me as a friend. That's great, but all you could do in this whole time is say, are you alive? You couldn't post something on Facebook? You couldn't... Message a friend to tell me, hey, look, I'm worried about Andre. No, you didn't, did you? Neither did my overseas friends that so-called love and care about me and I mean everything to them and they didn't do anything either. See, I take this. Like the Arrow, if you've ever seen the show, he had a list of people and he had to tick the names off. That's what I'm doing. Because I'll tell you something. This new me, I've got confidence. I don't feel low about myself anyway. I know I'm a good looking bloke. I know I'm a decent bloke. I just hang around with shit. And when I start hanging around with shit, I start smelling like shit. And there have been this whole year. You know, the first thing that I would do is I'd love to get rid of these sheets and just fucking burn them. Then I would like to Just, you know, it's it's hard because number one, these are cool sheets. I've got one on my bed, one on the floor right now. That's what I'm actually kneeling on because it's nice and soft. I don't, um, sometimes I just like lay on the floor here, play my computer, play my video games. I don't really, I'm living like I have no one. My friends, my family. Oh, believe me. If you think for a second, my family, my parents, and my friends give a shit about me, you'd be wrong. They care about themselves. They don't understand what it's like to have everything and then have nothing. I can't go out for drives when I'm depressed because I'm home detention. I can't go on the internet talk to people. So I have no friends to talk to. No internet, no way of getting out. I'm confined basically to this house and this room. Yeah, I can go outside to the end of the driveway, but that's it. You know, I've lost everything in these six months. I've still got my house that I own, which, you know, is a bonus. Tax, I'm getting a very comfortable amount back. Very comfortable. So financially, I'm fine. I got my house still, tenants still live there, still pay pay me my rent. I have bought some nice clothes lately, like I said, saw that nice top there. You know, I've bought some, you know, shitload of PlayStation games and Xbox games like you would when you're home detention. I have 
now uh, invested in Fight TV. Um, I don't know for how long because I'm not a big fan of the channel. Because um, a lot of things you go pay for this, pay for that. Not like Foxtel where you can like just, you know, if you want an upgraded package, you just do. I'm only doing it because I want to watch AEW. But new speakers here. Which strangely enough, that one lights up. This one's not lighting up as much. I'm going to have to check that one out in a minute. I don't know why. That's very odd. Because that one's all lit up. I've got these big massive speakers that light up. And you see the kind of glow there? That's my thing. Wait a minute. I think it's because it's on a setting, I think. Maybe it's on a setting. I'll fix that up after. But, um, you know, it's very interesting that people say, oh, but you live with your parents. What kind of girl wants to date a guy that lives with his parents? You know how I live. You think I'm going to move out of the kingdom to live with the peasants and a stupid little unit? Please. Any person that comes up here would love to stay here. We've had random strangers even like just sit in the gazebo outside for like 10 minutes because it's it's peaceful to them. It's nature. It's uh, It's invigorating to them. Yeah, we've actually had random strangers like come up to buy the honey and they'll be like sitting in there at the gazebo for like 10 minutes. It's like, okay, that's really weird. But at the end of the day, if I was to find the right partner, the right person and start a relationship with and eventually somewhere down the track after a couple of years, want to get a house with me and my partner yeah of course i would but why leave the kingdom to live in a place you don't feel comfortable in and you know someday i'd love to have kids i'd love to get married and all that and have my own house but right now it's this is home and like i said i get rent from my tenants that you know live in my property that i own See, living with mum and dad here, it's it's good because, you know, I give an eye on them and I feel safe in this environment where, you know, at nights I know when that gate shuts, no one can get into this property. No one, the gates are like very tall. It's not like you can jump over them. Um, you know, it's a safe environment. Why would I leave a safe environment, you know? The problem is at the end of the day, I know people are coming after me. They want to date me because they know that they can get expensive jewelry. They can get a good, you know, they live a comfortable life when people date me. I, I understand that no one will accept me for me. The girl I was talking about that I want to date there's a couple of them. Like I said, the one that says, are you alive? Yeah, I'd love to date her. Man, she's everything I want in a girl. Perfect looks, perfect heart. You know, like I said, doesn't do drugs, doesn't smoke. I'm friends with her friend because her friend uh, is in a relationship with my friend, which is kind of cool. It'd be nice if all four of us could hang out. But unfortunately, I think... In her mind, she looks at me like I'm not good enough for her and she probably won't want to date me because I don't fit the mould that she probably looks for. And that's cool. That's her type, you know. Unfortunately, people judge people by their types and I'm not that person's type. Then there's this other one, that single mum I was telling you about, that I get along with her mum, I get along with her little one. I'd love to date her. I'd be very happy with her. I don't think that uh, there's any reason why me and her wouldn't even work. I think we would. I think it'd be easy. She's very beautiful. She's very kind. Um, she knows what I've been through. I know she's been through very similar. And I think that it'd be a very, I'd be good for her. And I think she knows that I'd be good for her. But she's been through a lot and, you know, her little one comes first and I've got to respect that. But I think, you know, she should give me a chance. 
I mean, the chemistry was there. We've hooked up before and yeah, it was, it was good. But you may say, oh, well, what about that girl that you, when you got out of jail, the one that you kissed, you cuddled and all that? That wouldn't work in a relationship. She's not the sort of person I would date for the obvious reasons. I'm not going to dig into that person, personal life, but, you know, I'm not her type. She's not. It's not about, like, she. I find her very attractive. It's not, like I said, very. Good. she's a very good kisser. Actually, to be honest, she's actually the best person I've kissed all year. Like, she was, it was like magic, but it would never work. And I, and I think that she knows that. And, and I know that if, if she did want to date me, I don't think she would even give me the time of day. I don't think it would even work. I think there's just too much there that kissing is one thing, but, you know, having an actual relationship, it wouldn't work. It's very hard, like, kneeling right now because I can't actually be fucked getting that chair. I'm actually going to get my chair because I still want to talk. I should have probably got this chair earlier, but... But, um... Like I said, you've seen the two vids before this. That was when I first got out of jail. That the first vids that I made. Has my opinion of things changed since those vids? No. <laughs> you, like I said, when you see those two and then this vid, you will realize why I'm not live. I'll be live when I, you know, go on my holiday. I'll be live all the time. <laughs> but at the moment, it's just, you know, when this all ends, this court stuff, I'm not going to be jumping straight back into live vids because I know there's going to be people that are going to bombard me with questions that I cannot answer, especially live. I'll be out in person, do it, but live, I won't be able to. I would like to hope that I have a warm re reception when I get back, but you know, the, whether they're on Facebook or not, there'll be some haters. Couple haters. Couple haters. But, um, look, this vid, I am, I'll tell you what day it is. It is August the 26th, Friday, 11.55. So, September 6th, obviously, is the next court day. Hopefully it's the last. We think it's the last. Um, but like I said, you know, we never know. Never know with courts. I'll be, probably if I get the chance beyond straight away, then I'll post all these vids. I the, the thing is, the first three vids, the two before this and this one, they're fine. They're safe vids. But the other vids, you know, I, I'll have to watch them before I post them. Shouldn't have to, but, you know, I don't, like I said, I, I'm very good. I don't mention people's names. I don't know. You know, people know who the fuck I'm talking about anyway half the time. People think, oh, it's about me. It's like, no, it's not about you at all. That's how much you watch the vids. But when you see all these 20, 30 odd vids, there's, there could be even be, I think there's about 40. And you may think, oh God, he's in 40, yeah, 40 vids. Because when I didn't have access to internet, I made these vids, like these daily confessions, you know, because it gets stuff off my chest. It, it gets people to realize what's happened and what my opinion is of certain things. I mean, there is a lot of random topics that I've discussed. It's not just what's happened this year. There's other things in the vids. Um, there is Kid Rocker. He's back. Yeah. My alter ego. Wait till you... <laughs> that, vid, that vid's a bit naughty, I'll be honest, but... I've been through what I've been through and I'm not sugarcoating things. I'm not going to lie about things, you know. At the end of the day, I think people have noticed, known me for years, the fact that I'm not one to lie. I'm one to tell the truth like it is. Whether it makes me look bad, whether it makes someone else look bad, I tell it like it is. I'm not going to just, to, you know, 
Well, not say that, not say this. I'll say what the fuck I want to say. I'm a human fucking being. No one has the right to tell me what I can and can't do. What I can and can't say. When someone tells me that I'm not allowed to show feelings or emotions, get fucked. Because most men don't have a heart. Most men don't have feelings. They're cold. They can't even tell their partner they're beautiful. They can't even tell their partner that they love them or care about them. But this guy here that you're looking at, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to say it like it is. If I think someone's beautiful, I'll say, you're beautiful. If someone says they're foul, I'll be like, eh, you're not skinny, but, you know, you're human. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Like, fuck, man. Like, we live in a world right now where we have to be careful what we say because we might offend people. Fuck off. Who cares if we offend people? We have the freedom to speech. We have the freedom to say what we want to say. Why should we be silent? I think in everyday life, people should speak up and tell it like it is. Because if more people told it like it is, this world wouldn't be as bad as what it is right now. You know, you can't say, oh, all lives matter. It has to be black lives matters. You know, people, if they're against same-sex marriage, they're the bad people. Because, you know, they don't support it. And then there's people out there that are for Russia. Then there's people out there for Ukraine. You know, it's like, you know, people are entitled to their opinions. We shouldn't sugarcoat them. We shouldn't, you know not be their friend because they don't think the gay people should get married or, you know, they don't believe in all lives matter or black lives matter. It doesn't matter. If those people are decent to you, that's all that should matter. As long as they treat you right, it doesn't matter what they believe in, what they care about, what they do in their personal life. As long as that person treats you with respect and likes you and cares about you, that's all that matters. Personal politics shouldn't even come into it. This world right now is just... It's, it's in the shits, basically, because of what's going on. You know, it's like, you would think as a world, we wouldn't be divided as much as we are. So if we had extraterrestrials come into this earth, they would look at us and be like, oh, they're easy targets. They, they hate each other. They kill each other. They blow each other up. Anyone from outside the earth can just come in and nuke us. We're dead because we don't get along. This country hates this country. This place doesn't like this place. You know, it's, it's ridiculous. Why can't we all just get along? Let people have their opinions and, and settle for that. There should be no one has the right to have weapons of mass destruction. No one should have a nuclear bomb. You know, the people that keep bombing each other, it's just ridiculous. Ukraine and Russia is ridiculous at the end of the day. You know, and then you look at China. They want to be the most powerful place in the world you know they could they got more population than anyone so you know they are buying like land everywhere in the world they buy it here in australia they buy our electricity they buy our water it's like they know if they went to war with us china we're fucked they can just go and turn out for power anytime now the fact that our power is controlled by china so they could just go, turn the switch off, done. No power. Yeah, that's how bad it is. And we have to live in a world like that. And then you may say, oh, but these Chinese are bad. No, 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 no. That's being racist. Because some of these Chinese are our doctors, our lawyers, our fast food places. You know, they're everywhere. I say no to racism. There should not be any racism in this world. Don't judge people by the color of their skin. Don't judge by their ethnic ethnicity. You know, just we should all get along. If a guy wants to live his life as a female, he should be able to. If if, if a guy wants to marry a guy or a girl wants to marry a girl, that's their life. It doesn't hurt you. Doesn't affect you. Then don't worry about it. If it affects you and you don't like it, then that's that's you know that's stiff shit for you. But I'm just saying, like, there's a lot of people that you know don't agree with certain things and when people find out they're like i don't want to be friends with that person because they don't approve of same-sex marriage it's like well then if you don't want to be friends with that person just because they don't agree like you do of same-sex marriage what kind of person are you you just get up and leave a friendship like that because 
that person doesn't agree with you and your beliefs. It's like when you say, all lives matter. Indigenous people and people of a different colour be like, you're racist. It's all, it's, it's black lives matter. It's not all lives, it's black lives matter. So to anyone that says all lives matter, they get in trouble, they get in shit, they get called they're racist. And it's like, what? Like, I, 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 I believe all lives matter. It doesn't matter what colour your skin is, doesn't matter where you're from. Human life matters at the end of the day. We're all to be treated equally. Not for the colour of our skin. We're all humans. We're a human race. That's how I look at things. I don't see a, a black man, an Asian man. You know, I, I see everyone as just normal humans at the end of the day. I just don't like racism. I've grown up on, you know, people hating Italians and I've seen people hate Germans and, you know, Greeks, Lebanese. Like, everyone says, oh, Lebanese, are fucking all, all they want to do is start fights and stuff. Aboriginals, all they want to do is start fights. Italians... All they care about is pasta and their fully sick music, their fully sick beats and fucking all that. Racist, man. Racist. It's just, you know, every race, you know, has a right to believe in what they believe in. Every race has a right to do what they want to do. The rules should apply, though. Whether you're an Aboriginal or an Australian white man, if both of them do the same crime, both of them should have the same punishment and the same outcome. Not. And it's just like males and females. If a male stabs another man and a female stabs a female, just because she's a female, she shouldn't get a lighter sentence. It's like if a, if a man stabs a woman and she dies, but a woman stabs a man, right? So they both stab each other. Why does the man stabbing the woman get more years than the woman stabbing the man? It's not fair. It's like, um, here's another example. So if a woman bashes a guy, she gets a lighter sentence than a guy bashing a woman. And it doesn't matter if she's bigger than the guy, the woman gets the, the lesser charge. Why is that? It's bullshit. Violence doesn't solve anything at the end of the day. No one should be hitting anybody. But I'm just saying, the crime... It's still the same. It shouldn't matter what gender or race you are. It's just, yeah. I could spend an hour just talking on that subject. You know, you always hear the woman's voice, the victim, but you never hear the man's side. Because the man's afraid to tell his side because he's afraid of what people may say. He's afraid of what, how people will treat him. I've made it clear on my vids that are coming up, you'll see on here, and in the past, I've been a victim of abuse. I have been raped. I have been in situations where I can't believe I'm still alive to this day. But I am. And, you know, I am very lucky. But there's some that are not. There's some men that have been hurt so much they take their own life. Because they can't live in a world full of hurt and pain from their partner. I could give you an example where a man has been cheated on and used and abused and he questions whether he should be alive or not. You can think about that one. He, he thinks that why should he be alive? He doesn't want to know the person he's... Every time that that person gets into a relationship, he'll be upset. He knows that that person has hurt him so much that it doesn't matter if he gives up his own life because at the end of the day, he want, that's what he's focused on doing. There are people like that out there, but they hide it. You may think that, hey, that person's okay, but do you really know if they're okay? Just because they come on a live stream or make a vid and smile and pretend everything's okay, everything's okay. No. See, what me and others do in front of a camera, we, we put on a show, we put on an act, we, 
we tell you what we want you to hear. We tell you a little bit about our private life. We tell you a story. We tell you, and we show you, you know, different sides of us, whether it's singing, dancing, stripping. We're all here to entertain you. And then uh, you're the people that want to watch us and want to know more about our lives. So you tune in to every vid. Just like the YouTube vids coming up, you want to know what was Andre thinking before that first court case? What was he thinking on that second court date? You know, what was he feeling the moment he got out of court? You want to know all that. You want to know more. So you watch these vids, whether they're an hour and a half, two hours, 30 minutes, 20 minutes. You watch them because you know that you're thinking, I wonder if Andre has mentioned me in his vids or insinuated about me. You want to know what's happened in this six months that all this bullshit's gone on. But you won't get the whole 100% of what's going on. So if you were to watch every single vid when they're posted of what's happened in this time, you'll get a gradual idea of what's happened. But the extra pieces of the puzzle that you want to know, you have to ask me. But I'm not going to divulge it on Facebook or YouTube. If you live where I live, you can come see me. If you want to ring me, you can ring me. Because obviously, you know, there's some things I can't say due to the laws of Facebook and the laws of, you know, YouTube. But, um, you know, you will find out the truth. And you will probably cry and feel sorry for me. But I don't need anyone feeling sorry for me. Right now, as far as I'm concerned, I have zero friends. As of recording this vid. I have zero hope on fully recovering. My mind may be clear. There's nothing wrong with my brain. But at the end of the day, justice will be served. I will get my privileges back, internet, Facebook, go out driving again, and pretend that none of this ever happened. And that's my focus. I'll enjoy my holiday when I get the chance, if I'm allowed. I'm not sure how the, after the court stuff finishes, like if I can, am I allowed to leave the state? Am I not allowed to leave the state? You know, hopefully, like, I, I think my lawyer did say that there shouldn't be any problems leaving the state, even the country. But, um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, The hourglass, as I've said in, in previous vids, you'll see after this vid. The hourglass, the sands will run out. What happens when it runs out? You'll hear this word and this saying a lot in my vids when they get posted. The end game is near. And there's two. One is after court. That's the end game for the first part. But there's a second part. And you'll hear in these vids that I have lived just a, a, a different life since I've been out of jail. I've lived a very different life than anyone knows. My parents don't know. My family doesn't know. My friends don't know. I've had a different life. I've lived a secret one. And without that secret life, I wouldn't be alive today making this vid. You see... I have to find things to take my mind off things. I have to do things to not be part of this world. And if I didn't do them, I wouldn't be alive. And, you know, people are going to ask me, what's that mean? What's all that about? Well, I'm not going to say it because I don't need to. And the end game after, I know that choices I make are going to make people cry, angry, upset, unhappy, but it's my life. And whether it's a short one or a long one, it's up to me at the end of the day. But right at this stage of my life and how I'm feeling right now, I feel like I've hit rock bottom. 
I mean, yeah, what you can say, but you've got a, you've got a nice house you live in. You live with a family. You're not homeless. You you own your own house too. You know, you've got your tenants paying your rent. You know, you're not struggling. No, I guess you're right on that. And like I said, you know, when I get my new car and I go on a holiday, things will be a little bit better. The heart will recover. It always does. But um, my parting words in this vid would be stay tuned. Watch the YouTube videos that come up and you'll get your answers there. Thank you for watching. Check the four corners of your screen now. It's time to say goodbye and good night. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank <laughs> you.